Happy Friday! Um, hope you guys are doing splendidly well today. Um, congratulations on making it through that 10 days of packet work. Whoa. I just loaded all your stuff for next week onto Seesaw. Um, so if you want to check that out, check it out. You don't want to check it out till Monday, you do you. Um, okay, chapter 15 was so exciting, wasn't it? We finally found Auntie Sarah. She's speaking. Um, it looks like her dress was trapped underneath that trunk, remember? Um, this picture right here kind of shows. So we've got Tiffany, Annabelle, and Auntie Sarah's dress right there is trapped under there. So um, this next chapter, 16, was called The Dolls Make a Plan. So let's see what happens. Ready? Auntie Sarah... Annabelle had found herself clutching at Tiffany. Closer. Clutching at Tiffany, but now she let go and stepped toward the doll on the floor. Are you alive? Are you really alive? I'm coming too, said Auntie Sarah, and Annabelle remembered a time years and years ago when Grandma Catherine had been playing with her in bed and had forgotten about her, and Annabelle had slipped down the side of the bed in the wall. She had been wedged there for close to a week, and during that time she felt groggy and sluggish, like a frog hibernating at the bottom of a pond. She hadn't been in doll state, but she felt as if she had been in another kind of state, one that changed her perception of time. And so that when she was finally discovered, she had been surprised to find that six and a half days had passed instead of merely an hour or two. Auntie Sarah, we've been looking everywhere for you. We've been searching and searching, added Tiffany. You don't know me, but I... Is Aminorius Ferrex nearby? Asked Auntie Sarah sleepily. What? said Annabelle. The, the black lace weaver. Um, is that a spider? Asked Tiffany brightly. Yes, and I was so close to it. Annabelle uttered a cry and jumped aside. Annabelle, that was 45 years ago, said Tiffany. I don't think the spider's still around. 45 years ago, exclaimed Auntie Sarah, sounding both distressed and more awake. Yes, said Annabelle. But how? Annabelle read your journal, said Tiffany, and Annabelle dug her elbow into Tiffany's side. What? Oh, my. Annabelle knelt beside Auntie Sarah. Can you sit up, she asked. No, I'm stuck. That's the problem. So here is a great picture of Auntie Sarah laying there. You see all the cobwebs on the sides of her. Crazy. I wonder what Uncle Doll's going to think. Well, wiggle out of your dress then, said Tiffany. I can't. I've tried and I've tried, but I'm sewn into it. And part of my sleeve is caught too, see? Okay, then we'll pull you out, said Annabelle. Here, Tiffany, grab her shoulders. Annabelle and Tiffany grabbed and pulled and pulled and pulled some more. Nothing happened. I guess we're not strong enough, said Tiffany at last, eyeing the trunk. How'd you get trapped here anyway? I took off to explore one day. I suppose I should have told someone where I was going, but I was in a rush. And Annabelle, your parents didn't like me to talk about my explorations, so I dashed to the attic, and I was so close, so close to Amarobia Sparrix. I could just see her legs creeping out from under a floorboard when someone came into the attic with a big pile of things. Boxes and clothings and I don't know what. I didn't even know anyone was at home. I hid right away, of course. Whoever it was was very busy for quite a while, putting things away and moving cartons around. I thought I'd found the perfect hiding place when suddenly I felt the trunk shift and then it was lifted up slightly and when it was lowered to the ground, it came down on my dress. It just missed my legs and my left arm. I was lucky it hadn't come down on me. I would have been crushed, but I was trapped. I couldn't move. I thought I would just wait for some kind of help to come, and then I suppose I must have drifted off. For 45 years, exclaimed Tiffany. Isn't that something? 45 years, Auntie Sarah repeated. Why, Catherine must be... Let me see. She's a grandmother now, said Tiffany. I want to make sure you caught that. When Auntie Sarah was a doll back in the house, so before she got stuck in the attic, Grandma Catherine was the little girl who played with the dolls. 45 years ago, Grandma Catherine was a little girl, and Catherine was the, like, owner of the dolls. And now she's had a daughter, Annie, and she's had a daughter, Kate, and that's who owns the dolls now. 
She had a daughter named Annie, added Annabelle. Named for me, I think. And now Annie has a daughter named Kate, and we're Kate's dolls. Well, I'm not, said Tiffany. I'm one of Nora's dolls. Who's Nora? asked Santa Sarah. So Annabelle and Tiffany sat down to help it, to tell Auntie Sarah some of the things that had happened since she had disappeared. They were trying to explain about the Funcraft dream house when suddenly Annabelle cried, Tiffany, what are we doing? We've got to go home now and we have to figure out some way to get Auntie Sarah out of here. We're going to need help, said Tiffany. I know, Annabelle paused. Then she said, I just thought of something. What if we do with Auntie Sarah? What, do we, what will we do with Auntie Sarah after we free her? We can't just bring her back to our house after all these years. She can't simply appear there. What would the Palmers think? I don't know. We're going to have to leave her here for now, said Tiffany. Annabelle gazed down at Auntie Sarah. Finally, I finally found you, and now I have to leave you in this place. She looked around the dim, dusty attic and almost let out a sob. We don't have a choice, said Tiffany. I already heard the clock chime four. Come on, Annabelle. She grabbed Annabelle's hand, and Annabelle said desperately, We'll be back as soon as we can, Auntie Sarah. I promise. So long for now, she called over her shoulder, as Tiffany pulled her toward the stairs. When Annabelle scrambled back up the stool and into the doll's house later, she was so excited that all she managed to blurt out was, We found Auntie Sarah. You found her? You actually found her, cried Mama Doll. Yes, and she's alive. Papa sat down heavily in a chair. Nanny gasped, and Annabelle thought that this time Uncle Doll was going to faint, but he didn't. Well, we must go to the attic and get her immediately, he said. And it was only later that Annabelle would realize she hadn't yet said where she and Tiffany had found Auntie Sarah. So she didn't say we found her in the attic, but Uncle Doll said we must go to the attic and get her immediately. How did he know? The dolls asked a million questions, and Annabelle answered them proudly, but after a few, just a few minutes, Annabelle said, You know, we have a big problem. I don't think it's going to be too difficult to rescue Auntie Sarah. I think if we all go to the attic together, we can work her dress out from under the trunk. But then, what are we going to do with her? No one spoke. Annabelle knew it was on the tip of everyone's tongue to say, Why, just bring her home, of course. But each of the dolls stopped upon realizing that that was exactly the kind of thing that would put them in jeopardy. Eventually, the dolls had to resume their positions before a plan had been made, but Annabelle whispered just as the alarm clock went off. We'll meet with the fun crafts tonight. I know we'll figure something out. The next day, the dolls were less careful than usual. Whenever they thought they were alone, they scurried into the parlor to talk about Auntie Sarah. And by nightfall, they had decided on only one thing. That when the fun crafts came over, Nanny would stay behind with baby Brittany and baby Betsy and the rest of the dolls would go to the attic to see Auntie Sarah. Annabelle was terrified that something would happen to keep them from making the trip up the attic stairs. That the captain would appear, or that it would begin to rain again, or even that Kate would have trouble sleeping. But none of those things happened. And shortly before midnight, Annabelle found herself leading the way up the stairs. Behind her, she could hear all sorts of groans and grunts and exclamations. Mama and Papa had particular difficulty with the steps, but Mom and Dad Funcraft helped them. Isn't this exciting? Annabelle whispered to Tiffany as they neared the top step. Look what Selp has done. We are amazing, said Tiffany. The moment the last of the rescuers, Papa, had huffed and puffed his way up the top step, the nine dolls looked ahead of them into the dimly lit room. This is the gateway to the attic, said Tiffany dramatically. Where's Auntie Sarah? asked Uncle Doll. Over there, said Annabelle, and led the way to the trunk. Look at all this stuff, exclaimed Bobby as they passed by the boxes and crates and old pieces of furniture. We definitely come to come back here, said Bailey. We play here every night. Think what we might find. It is quite a playground, agreed Mom Funcraft. Mama and Papa said little, but Annabelle could see them gazing around the attic, attic with wide, curious eyes. Okay, Auntie Sarah's back here, Annabelle finally announced. Come on, everybody. Just then, Papa held out a hand. Uncle Doll should go first, he said quietly. So Annabelle led Uncle Doll around the corner of the trunk and then slipped back to her family and friends. Family and the fun crafts. She wanted to listen to what was being said between Uncle Doll and Auntie Sarah, but Mama shook her head. So down here, we've got Annabelle and the fun crafts kind of watching and waiting. And then there's Uncle Doll over there knelt down next to Auntie Sarah. Seeing her for the first time.
Finally, after several minutes, he paused. Papa said, All right, now I think the rest of us would like to see Auntie Sarah. Okay, said Annabelle, and she walked around the trunk again, this time followed by the other dolls. Here she is, she said, and there was Auntie Sarah, still lying on the floor, of course, but now Uncle Doll was kneeling beside her, holding her hand. I just can't believe I've been here for 45 years, Auntie Sarah was saying. I feel like Rip Van Winkle. Who's Rip Van Winkle, Bailey asked, but in the confusion that followed, no one answered him. Annabelle introduced Auntie Sarah to the fun crafts, and then all the grown-up dolls began talking at once. Mostly, Annabelle heard apologies from Mama and Papa and Uncle Doll, and then she heard Mama say something she would have to ask her about later. We thought you had run away. Run away? Why? Annabelle started to say. So here's a picture of Auntie Sarah's laying there. You can see all the doll's legs around her. But Mom Funcraft had stepped over to Uncle Doll, who was still holding Auntie Sarah's hand. I know you haven't seen each other in a very long time, she said to Auntie Sarah, but shouldn't we see if we can free your dress? Uncle Doll answered for her. Oh, my, yes, of course. How silly of us. He got to his feet. Mama and Papa and Uncle Doll and Mom and Dad examined Auntie Sarah's dress and the trunk. If we all work together, could we move the trunk? asked Bobby from behind them. I don't think so, replied Papa after a moment. But if we work together, I believe we can pull Sarah's dress out from under it, said Uncle Doll. The dolls, all nine of them, bent down next to Auntie Sarah and each grabbed two handfuls of her dress. They pulled, they pulled harder, they braced their feet against the trunk and groaned and pulled even harder. Hey, it's moving, cried Bailey. And so it was. Very slowly, Auntie Sarah's dress was sliding out from under the trunk where it had been trapped for 45 years. At the end, a small piece caught on the, on the brass fixture on the corner had, and tore off, but it was so tiny. And Auntie Sarah was already so very dirty and dusty and cobwebby that Annabelle didn't think it would matter. Auntie Sarah raised her hands to her head. Goodness, she said, thank you. Uncle Doll helped her to sit up, which she did stiffly. Then she announced that she felt fit as a fiddle and was ready to go. But Uncle Doll held her back. Not yet, he said. We haven't. Oh, gotta stop. We haven't figured out what to do with you. You can't just appear in Kate's dollhouse. That would raise suspicions. It certainly would, said Mama. But luckily I have an idea, said Annabelle. You do? said Tiffany. You didn't tell me. Well, I just thought of it now, replied Annabelle. What we must do is get Auntie Sarah to a place where one of the Palmers will find her so she can be returned to the dollhouse by a human. That would put us in jeopardy. So I thought... Where could she go after all these years that won't make the Palmer suspicious? Right away it came to me, the captain's bed. If we put Auntie Sarah there, the Palmers will think the captain has been prowling around again and he found Auntie Sarah somewhere and took her to his bed so he could play with her. That's brilliant, exclaimed Tiffany, and everyone agreed, except for Auntie Sarah, who simply said, Who's the captain? Annabelle explained, and after a moment, Auntie Sarah said, A cat's bed? Well, all right, if I must, I must. Let's go. Oh, not tonight, Sarah, said Uncle Doll. I'm afraid there isn't enough time. We'll have to go tomorrow. You mean I have to spend another night in the attic, said Auntie Sarah. Oh, dear. Well, perhaps I'll see Amorobius Ferrex after all, or even an Arrhenius Diamethodist. What a shame. I don't have my journal with me. So here's Auntie Sarah sitting up with Uncle Doll. The dolls talked for a bit longer, and then Papa said to Auntie Sarah, It's time for us to leave. I'm terribly sorry, but we'll be back tomorrow night. And maybe by the day after that, you'll be home again. So exciting! I can't wait to hear how this plan works out. It seems pretty good, but sometimes good plans are a little too good to be true. So um, on Monday, we'll read 17. On Tuesday, we'll read 18, and on Wednesday, we will read 19, and you can take the quiz on this because we'll be done. All right, you guys have a fantastic weekend. If you need anything, let me know, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.